reading down. Do not be anxious then, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we clothe with what shall we clothe ourselves? Jesus is saying, don't be concerned about the material. He said, you too focus on this mess. Now we as American Christians, our whole life is bent on this. He said, for all these things, the Gentiles eagerly seek. But your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these. The implication of verse 32 is he's going to give you some of that. He'll give it to you. You just stop concentrating on this. Man, I can't, I can't lose the car. Get a cheaper one, man. Ah, uh, you wouldn't say that. No, mine's paid for. See, that's not coming. When I bought that car, I paid for it because I didn't ever want to make another car note in my life. That is the most ridiculous thing in the world when you got it. Man, here you driving a car and still paying for it for five years. So when I paid for it, it's my car, it's comfortable, I'll never buy another new car. If I do, it'll be cash, but I don't have any money. <laughs> Jesus said, stop seeking all that stuff. He has need, he has a knowledge that you have a need of. But look what he says in contrast in verse 33. But, when he uses that term, he says, seek first. He didn't say not to look for a car, not to think about having a car, not thinking about having good clothes, Cedric, and you need some other clothes, Cedric. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, he's, he's not telling you not to think about that. He says, but seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things Jesus said will be added. So he didn't say that he wants you as Christian to walk around a park poor, raggedy, looking bad. I mean, if you're a beautiful woman and you want to uh, marry a nice, handsome guy, don't go out to dinner with your hair all undone, last week's makeup on, uh, runs in your stockings, uh, okay, didn't take a tic-tac, and your breath is smelling like a rhinoceros tongue. Uh, I mean, come on! And then you see, yeah, you we know, can get together. I'm just going to get up and break down the restaurant running out of there, getting away from you. Now, he's not going to add those beauty tips to you. He didn't say to you guys, and I'm just telling you like it is, to work on your articulation. I was talking with a young man, and I was talking with him, and he said, for well, sure. I said, what? What's short? Excuse me, excuse me. What? What's short? I said, you mean for sure. I said, you mean for sure. For sure. Hi, yay, 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 yay. Sheree, as a teacher in this classroom, you have dropped the ball here. <laughs> you dropped the ball. This is a school teacher. And you got children growing up, grown men talking about the show. <laughs> you don't talk like that time you do you? All right, see, he's laughing. Stop trying to be cool, no? Speak that way to you. Now, these individuals. These individuals that come against this uh, take a firm stand against the spirit of the age. Now, I went to Wikipedia and downloaded this word of the, how do you say it, Bob? The zeitgeist? The zeitgeist? Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. You go to Wikipedia because that is a German term that stands for the spirit of the age. And this is what a lot of Christians have fallen into. They've fallen into the spirit of the age. Here's the um, a definition uh, uh, of that word. The spirit of the age uh, is the general cultural, intellectual, ethical, and spiritual, as well as political climate within any nation or any specific group. See, we as Christians cannot take on the zeitgeist of this age that we live in. We can't do that. Because once you take on the spirit of the age, then we are no different from them. 
I didn't say that I'm not going to enjoy myself when I go on my vacation. They won't know that I'm a Christian until I open up my mouth. Because we have no halos, Agnes, hanging over our head everywhere we go and we bow the halos down. Oh, there's a Christian walking. Why? See the halo? No. No. But you have to be careful that you don't follow this. Also, also, there are even specific groups along with the general ambiance or the morals of that group. You know, it's the way the young kids want to be cool when they get out with their friends. You know, the way the girls want to up that hem of that skirt, show them thighs and kind of, you know, pull the brown on. Hey, man, you know, see, I'm, I got a clean, you know. I'm showing them. I'm showing them all right. See, that's the spirit of the age because you see it all on television. All on television everywhere. We are not to follow that. The social, cultural direction or the mood of a particular air, uh, the mainstream or the trend, we cannot do that. Because we are Christians. And I'm telling you, you got to fight to know that. Every time you go into a sports shop to buy some stuff, John, you see it, man. Man, I'm telling you, you know what my favorite is now? Adidas with the three white stripes. <laughs> Boom! I want them in my sweatpants, want them in my top shirt. Adidas, man, you can keep the Nikes. <laughs> Give me the three bars. Make me look like sergeant in charge. <laughs> and then you've seen the cheap two-stripe pants that they got out. See, I said, no, I'm not quite Adidas, no. Got to have the Adidas patch on it. That's the zeitgeist of the age. Uh -huh. yep. I didn't tell you as Christians to walk around here looking like you dressed it in the 50s. Oh. I'm just teaching. <laughs> These, yeah, all right. Cool. What's that say? All right, all right. 80s prone, right? There it is. But see, he stopped at the 80s. <laughs> all right. See, these desire, the true Christian desires to be associated with the family of God. Now let's look about what that association is like. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. If you're a true Christian, you want to be associated with God's people, with God's people. But sometimes Christians, or professing Christians, bug me. They, I mean, they're, they're boring. I mean, if all we're going to talk about, John, is the Bible. All right, I believe in the Bible, but you like to play checkers or something? You know, let's do something, Alphonse. Let's play some domino. All right, we don't have to gamble for money. But we can put an apple on the table or something. <laughs> Have some fun. But this is where we are. Look at 9 through 11. Philippians chapter 1. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in the real knowledge and all discernment. You know, Christians that have stopped growing in love, just don't love people no more. Just only love their special friends. I got my group. As long as I got my group, I'm safe. You... I don't want to have nothing to do with you. You know, you can see people come to our study like Bob visited us today. What's he doing here? I don't know him. What does he know about PJ? How does he know him? No, no. Saying that let that love grow more and more in the real knowledge and all discernment. You know why he said real knowledge? Because what it crept into the first century church is a false kind of knowledge. And this false kind of religious knowledge is what a lot of Christians put out today. They figure they have to be overzealous religious. You've seen them, oh, praise the Lord. Every time you talk, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, ta 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 pa ha ha Oh, ya da ta ta pa ta 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 I'm looking at these unreal fools. And I'm not using the term that Jesus said, call no man a fool. But they're foolish.